Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Delighted that you could stop by. This is a wine educational channel which is designed to help really just people learn more about wine. But it's really specifically geared up to those of you opening books about wine, studying about wine. And really, I tailor a lot of these presentations around the syllabus of wine qualifications, such as the WSET. And this video is no exception. Welcome to here looking at Northwest Italy. This is really a massive multi part series. Here you are eight series in Northwest Italy majorly Piemonte and welcome to the last series on Piemonte which goes through the great variety Arneas and then looks a little bit at some other varieties that one may find. So this is going to be a three-part series. We'll go through on this presentation all about Arneas. Part two will be uh, on the key appellations where we find this grape in Piemonte. And then part three is about other grape varieties, which is not a part of the diploma syllabus. However, it's interesting to find out about varieties such as Grinolino, Timorasso, Frieza, those kind of varieties. Part two and three will only be available uh, to members of my e-learning portal. That's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. Lots of exclusive content there and also lots of resources to help you with your studies. If you have any comments or questions, please pop them in the comments section below this video. Make sure you click like and subscribe and you'll also find all of the social media at the bottom of every slide. So let's talk about the history of this grape variety. So from Ruero in Piemonte, and that of course is today where we find it very importantly, it was possibly first mentioned in 1432. This is in Chieri, which is close to Torino, under the name uh, Reynassi, I suppose you would pronounce it. Apparently that was his first name. And that could actually derive from uh, another grape name nearby uh, from around the 15th century as well. So um, there are some very early synonyms for this variety. But it could be also that the grape may have taken its name from the presence of Arneas in the vineyards. Uh, so it's possible that it took its name from that area. During the 17th and 18th centuries, uh, the contraction of Ronesi supposedly produced Arneas. Uh, so it's a difficult one that is um, not understood fully, but it's potential that these names, uh, the etymology it comes from, these early synonyms that are mentioned in text, because they're not actually linked to anything else in the area. Uh, but more about its etymology, what it directly translates to today. So in local dialect, the word Arneas actually is used to describe a wily and temperamental person. We all have one of those in our lives and probably it might be you or I after we get very little amounts of sleep. It certainly is me. So this could have given the name to this grape. Uh, reflecting on how difficult it is to grow and how difficult it is to vinify. So they probably ended up calling it the crazy, um, wily and temperamental grape variety because of its challenges both in the vineyard and in the winery. You'll also hear people say that the translation is rascal or um, in a more of an English dialect, a little bugger as well. So the wily and temperamental person is a much more um, diplomatic way of saying it, I believe. Uh, so the first actual use of Arneas as a grape variety name, remember we had all of those quite confusing synonyms beforehand. The first written record we have of Arneas, the same word that means this wily and temperamental person, which was actually uh, in 1877. Uh, so it's actually only been called this for about 150 years. 
Um, now, what about moving into modern times of this variety? So Aeneas virtually all but disappeared in 19, uh, by the 1970s, by the early 1970s. Remembering that, of course, it is a challenge to produce through the vineyard to the winery. So only a couple of producers were actually making Arnaeus in the 1970s, looking at uh, Vietti, uh, which you'll see we have identified here, and Bruno Giacosa. Uh, so they were bottling it. So they saved it from extinction. And it's kind of gone through this white wine revival in Piemonte, where we, we see the likes of Timorasso, we see the, the likes of Cortesi as well, at Belluce in the north, uh, in the 1980s and 1990s. So it's gone a bit of, uh, through a bit of a revival. Uh, and we have gone from, in 2000, having about 900, sorry, uh, about 700 hectares to over 900 hectares in 2020. And the best producers in Piemonte would be, of course, Bruno Giacosa, uh, Vietti, Malvira, Del Teto, and Castina Chico as well. So we've now got more of a wealth of production of this quite exciting expression. So what is it like then as a grape variety? So here you go. It's quite vigorous and it's tolerant of things like mildew. Uh, downy mildew, but it's susceptible of uh, powdery mildew. It ripens in the second half of September. We would call it therefore mid ripening. And historically, it was actually grown alongside Nebbiolo uh, to soften Nebbiolo. So it was thrown in to soften it. And in fact, it does have a synonym, which is Nebbiolo Bianco. Uh, and uh, it, there's no genetic relation between Nebbiolo, the red variety, and Nebbiolo Bianco. But Nebbiolo Bianco is Arnaeus. It was a, a local name for it, used to sort of soften the harsh edges of unripened and stringent style of Nebbiolo. So what is it like? Um, so now we're understanding the variety and it's gone through this um, sort of modern uh, rebirth. We are really getting some great expressions from this. Uh, they can have sort of a light to medium intensity, but you'll find things like white flowers, chamomile, uh, white peach and lemon and pear as well. Typically, they have a, a sort of a moderate acidity, uh, but there are producers understanding this and vinifying um, earlier, picking earlier. Uh, and producing more of an acidic style to those that are just picking late. Typically, the wines are good. There are some very good ex uh, expressions. And we'll find the wines typically are around mid-priced with some premium examples. So there you are for Arnaeus as a style. Uh, please do, do, do join me for part two, where we look at the key appellations, which is only going to be a small video because there aren't many that one can find Arnaeus in Piemonte. As always, if you have any comments, questions or concerns, please do get in touch. Uh, you could do that by commenting on this video below. And if you uh, want to, you can use the social media you see at the bottom of every slide. But if you find yourself in the United Kingdom, then please come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle, likely a bottle. Ciao for now. Bye bye.